morning. So it is Sunday, July 12th, and I'm gonna vlog again this week because I just think it's a fun way to show that we're all under a lot of stress right now in these times. Anyway, here's my plan for today. I need to fill in this notebook, so I'm gonna do that. And then I need to edit a couple videos because I filmed a lot of videos last week. The inspiration just struck and I'm trying to get in the habit of banking videos so once the school year comes, I'm not like struggling. I also will continue to read these two books. I've got Incendiary by Soraya Cordova. This book is just like, it's a bit of a slow burn I've never read any of Soraya's work before, so I didn't know what to expect. The Brooklyn Brujas series is something that really interests me, but this happened to be like her new release, so I wanted to support her in that way. And man, she's so good at describing scenes. And it's interesting because I'm not finding any singular lines that I really like, but I am finding so many scenes where I'm just like, God, I can like visualize this. So I really appreciate the book for that. And like the plot itself is escalating in a way that seems realistic. It doesn't seem overdone. Um, so I just feel like I'm learning a lot about crafts reading her book. Then we have poetry, a writer's guide and anthology. I'm still reading this. I'm probably like a third or a quarter of the way through. Um, this book is amazing. Y'all need to get it. I'm going to keep saying that as long as I keep reading it. And we will probably go to the beach at some point today. I'm also going to do some writing sessions. So I'm about to do a writing session now. And then once I'm done with that, I will edit the description for last week's vlog. I think I'm going to try and do my vlogs like this because I think it just helps keep the narrative straight. Where like in the morning, I just list out what I plan on doing and then showing you guys clips of me doing those things. And then the next day I can share my reflections. So anyway, thanks for hanging out guys. So I just got done with a 30 minute writing session. I got 622 words in and I have realized two issues that I'm seeing. One, I'm trying to figure out how true to the original source a retelling has to be. So that's what my story is. It's a retelling of a fairy tale. And then two, I'm also trying to figure out what kind of worlds it is that the people are living in. So essentially you have two different groups. You have humans and the set of magical creatures and I'm trying to figure out if it needs to be two separate worlds where they don't know about each other or if it's like where they do know about each other, they just don't interact very much. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to decide what's going to be the best option for that. It's just hard because I'm still telling myself the story. And so there's so much that I'm, I'm learning myself as I go through this. So that is something that I need to add into the notebook. I need to create a section where I just think through like, what kind of world is this? And why do we want it this way? And I also just need to read a lot more middle grade and YA fantasy that talks about these same kinds of things. Because I think it will help me see what other authors have done already and how I can either adapt it to make it my own or do something completely different. But yeah, I'm telling novel writing is like a totally different beast. It's it is so technical and not to say that poetry isn't technical because it is, but I feel like poetry is a lot more emotionally driven whereas novel writing is like the emotions can't come through if the story's not right so yeah this is interesting this is a very different writing process and uh it's been very fun okay now i'm off to edit some videos
good morning guys so it is currently monday july 13th and i don't really have much going on today yesterday we went to the beach it took me forever to edit a couple videos um one of them was the vlog that i posted last week and then another one was the video that's gonna come out on wednesday um but because of that, I didn't get to do a second writing session. I did, however, start on my basically novel journal, so that's exciting. And um, yeah, I think it's it's been a good idea so far. It's, it's gonna. I need to set it up in a way where, like, anytime I have new ideas that pop up, I have a space to write them. So my plan for today is to look up some videos, see if anybody has done something like this, and see how they've set up their notebooks, and if they haven't. You know, I'll kind of just go based off, you know, any kind of suggestion I can find. I'm going to finish Incendiary because I'm pretty much done with that. I'm going to continue reading my poetry craft book because that has been really good. And then I plan on doing two writer sessions. So I'm going to head out because my daughter is now on her tablet mode and she is, you know, real into it. So see y'all later. an update from my day so far I'm outside which is why the lighting is super weird it's the afternoon which means it's like blazing hot over there and then kind of dim over here but anyway you know got some mail today which is exciting so a couple weeks ago I applied to a contest with a small press to get my full-length poetry manuscript published and there was an option to purchase a book from the press when I applied so I went ahead and did that and the press is called I'm trying to cover up my address there conduit press conduit books and this was the book that I picked for purchase so it's by an author named Michelle Lewis I've never heard of her before and the book is called animal flame um, and the description here says Actually, there's no description, but there is a blurb by Terence Hayes, who's an incredible poet. If you've never read work by him, I highly suggest you do so. And it says, Michelle Lewis writes with a candor and urgency that recalls the poems of the late great Jack Gilbert. These commanding poems manage to be both straightforward and associative in their grapples. Take the words you saved and put them here, Lewis writes in lyrical instruction, songs, and meditations. Animal flame is charged by an emotional integrity that yields exacting bite and insight. This is a marvelous debut. Pretty cool. So I just finished Incendiary, which was really fun. I think I'm gonna rate it four stars because I sort of predicted the ending, but it's definitely a series that I'm excited to continue. And honestly, like the Orisha trilogy, it, and the Waterfire Saga are like the only series really that I've been reading lately except for Death Note if you want to count that as well so I'm not much of a series reader so it's nice to kind of get back into that flow um, but here we have this book of poetry so I think I'm going to read this next and then jump into The Silent Patient just to mix things up a little bit I also really like this cover like I like this sort of collage kind of cover and it came with a little bookmark which is super cute so you know support your small presses support local presses support indie authors support authors published by independent presses we're out here we're trying to make it just like everybody else now the other thing that i am doing is setting up a little photo shoot because i have been working on my instagram to make it more bookstagrammy um, I still put per personal stuff on there, but I'm, I'm like changing up my grid, if you will, trying to pay more attention to that kind of thing. So here's what I have going and, you know, trying to go for a theme, trying to be all, you know, aware. I gotta do something about that cord though, but yeah, that's it.
Hey guys, so it is 11.45 at night and I just now started writing because I've been procrastinating all day. And I think I said this in my last vlog, but I think I've narrowed down a little bit more what issue I'm having when it comes to writing right now. So we basically have like two different worlds going on. We've got the human world and then we've got this magical creature world. And the magical creatures know about the humans, but only distantly, like they don't interact very regularly. Um, the humans know about the magical creatures, but in myth, like they don't think they're actually real. So I'm trying to figure out like, how how do i want these two worlds to come together because there's a situation that i'm writing where like the magical creatures have to come up to the human world and i'm it, it doesn't really make sense unless the magical creatures are prepared for it so I have to go back and, and add some details to the beginning of the story to make that make sense. Um, and I guess this is the, the issue with writing a novel is like some of these details start coming up in the later parts of the story and you realize like that's actually not going to make sense unless I go back and revise. So I think what I'm going to do is in my writer journal include notes like this to myself so I don't forget and so that way I can just like put it down on paper get it out of my head and focus on the draft because I do recognize the importance of sorry my hands hurting but I do recognize the importance of telling yourself the story first and if you get so tripped up by all the minute details then you end up losing the story itself but it's also kind of hard because it's like I, I'm a logical reader and so when something doesn't make sense to me and I just keep pushing through I'm kind of like ah this is driving me crazy so I don't know I guess that's also just more incentive to finish the first draft of the book earlier so you can start revising sooner food for thought okay Hey guys, so it is like close to midnight and I just started working on my first draft again. I am hitting the point right before the climax and what I realized I've had to do is I, I am getting so focused on the how that I'm not looking at the what. And so I've just decided that I'm going to skip over a huge chunk of the rising action and focus on the climax because I want to make sure that the scene makes sense and that way I can just move on to my falling action and my resolution. And I mean, it might turn out that the manuscript itself is pretty short on this first draft, like maybe around... 20 to 30,000 words, but I feel like that's okay because it's very bare bones and I can still take the month to like flesh it out and and really add some depth to it and some texture, but yeah, I um I was thinking a lot about Alexa Dunn and in one of her videos she talked about how like it's okay to have those messy parts in a first draft because it's just a first draft. It's not as if you're going to get every single detail that you need figured out that's what the subsequent revising pieces are for so i think that's what i need to do because i am just frustrating myself and then i don't want to write and then when i do write it's only like 500 words which isn't bad it's just not where i need to be so that's my plan and then what i think i'm probably going to do is once i finish this whole story 
And once I've said the whole thing to myself, I'm going to go in through my notebook and start plotting everything out based off this first draft I have and then go back and revise it. So I want to keep as much attention on it as I can this month. But then after this month, I want to give it a break because I think there is some benefit to like stepping away from a work. I know I did that with my poetry manuscript. I like didn't look at it for a year and I think it really helps me with that just to make it way stronger and, and reorganize things in a, in a much more cohesive way. So I think that'll be good for me to do with this fiction manuscript. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. I'm on chapter 30 right now. I, I just didn't think I could write something like this. I don't know if this should be middle grade or YA either. Um, I feel like realistically it needs to be YA. But then I feel like, I don't know, YA these days reads so adult in a lot of ways. Like, I, I don't know. When I was growing up, YA was, you know... Like middle grade was was just starting to be a thing. It was why it was definitely like Harry Potter and Percy Jackson and and Redwall and books like that. So it's kind of hard now. But anyway, and I'm also really loving this notebook. This was such a good idea, such a lifesaver. Um, I followed some YouTube videos, which I'm going to link. But they did a great job of just like breaking down how to set it up. So I've got this cute little word count tracker going here. And I can just color in the words that I get on my word count. And then over here, I've got my draft one problems and considerations. So I just go through and as I'm writing, these are questions I'm asking myself. Um, and then I want to, this is what I'm talking about in terms of plotting things out. I just want to make sure that I, I have like my big ideas of what I want to happen plotted out in the text. I've got my characters. I just list them as I go. There's some that are missing because I started this after I started writing the book. And then what I plan on doing is once I finish this draft, I'm going to go through and then with each chapter just kind of talk about like what's working and what's not working. And then that way I can just reference this as I work on a final draft. So yeah. I'm trying to make sure that imposter syndrome doesn't set in trying to make sure that I trust myself. I know it's a big issue that I have. I don't trust myself very often. So yeah, anyway, it's only Tuesday night, night y'all.
All right, hey guys. So um, as you can see, the lighting is pretty terrible because it is nighttime and I am currently taking a walk with my dog around the neighborhood. I just wanted to do a check-in today because I don't think I've done one. It's currently July 15th and yeah, today's just been a weird day. I have felt a lot of anxiety again about school starting and what that's actually going to look like. Um, but on some good, good notes, I have been working on my manuscript, which feels good, um, updating my resume. And um, I've also started reading The Silent Patient, which has been fun. It, it reminds me a lot of like English thrillers. So movies like Closer or um, not Snatch, because Snatch is a little bit more stylistic, but there was like a very specific type of thriller coming out of Great Britain in the like late 2000s, early 2010s, and that's what The Silent Patient reminds me of. I, I'm enjoying it so far, it's pretty cool. And I'm also listening to Influencer. That book is fine, but like it's not presenting me any information that I didn't know or that isn't common sense. So I've only got like 40-ish minutes left of it. I'll probably rate it three stars. Not my fave, but I could see if I was a lot younger and just starting out in my career, that might be helpful. But a lot of the stuff that I've learned is very common sense based off the book. It's a lot of like professionalism basics. So anyway. That's where I'm at with today. Hopefully this walk is uh, not too scary. Hey guys, so it's currently Thursday, July 16th. It's actually my sister's 30th birthday, which is nice, but I can't celebrate with her because she's in a different city than me. But today has been a weird day. I woke up feeling kind of sick. Um, I've been looking at part-time online teaching jobs. My husband and I are really trying to get out of debt and start saving for a house and stuff. So I figured universities are probably hiring people to teach online courses. Might as well throw my name in the ring. So I did that. I then met with my illustrator today and like this is what she's been coming up with so far the illustrations are so cute for this book i'm so excited so now we're just focusing on nailing down the skin tone of all the characters making sure that's consistent then uh, figuring out how to justify the text and i need to cut out some of the text because the thing with writing a picture book is that like you start off being really descriptive and then once the illustrator comes in and starts adding in that piece to the book some of the descriptions you have aren't necessary because you can now see it on the page so in this final go around that's what i'm gonna focus on and then she's also gonna design a cover which that'll be super cute and i'm just loving what she's come up with so far so that's happened and now I'm reading The Silent Patient. I'm about halfway done. And it, like I said last night, it's pretty good. But my one complaint about it is that it feels a little bit melodramatic. Um, and definitely like a European thriller. <laughs> so very like, oh, we smoke cigarettes and we drink wine and we, we talk about... Euripides and and psychoanalysis and all that kind of stuff so it's it's like kind of what I need right now I need sort of like a high class escapist kind of novel um to to get me out of this crazy time that we're in so it's been a fun read but one thing that I find strange about the book is it's told in two different ways. So you have the main narrator who is, whose name is Theo and he's a psychoanalyst. He works in a mental institution and he basically works with the, I don't know if she would be the antagonist of the book, but basically like 
she has murdered her husband. Her name's Alicia. She's an artist. And he's trying to figure out why. Why did this happen? Um, why would she do something like that? The other way that the story is told is through her diary. And so she writes in this journal and she talks about her thoughts and feelings. But something that's really strange in it is that she quotes conversations that she has with people and I don't know how realistic that is like I I keep a journal but I don't quote conversations that I have with people I describe what the conversations were but I don't sit there and quote what was said verbatim and that is something that's going on in the journals and I'm like that just doesn't seem realistic to me but that might be like a nitpicky thing that I view it um, so yeah, anyway, my plan is to read this, read some more of this, which I am almost done with. It's so good. Um, so if you're someone who's getting into poetry or wants to study more poetry, please do yourself a favor and buy this book. Then I'm going to go for a walk again. I've, yeah, I've been walking every day this week, which is super nice. And I just got to make sure that I keep doing that because my anxiety keeps building. And that is something that is definitely a release. And then by next, I, by next week, I want to get back into my running habit. I, I was running for a few weeks there. And then with everything going on in June, I just stopped. Um, so I want to get back on that. Um, yeah. And then write for like an hour because I haven't done that in a while um I finished influencer last night it's definitely I rated it three stars for the same reasons I talked about yesterday like if you are someone who's super young or first starting out their career like you haven't worked ever before there's a lot of good just career advice in that book and I think especially nowadays with having a social media presence even if you don't want to be an influencer I think there's a lot of good advice on how you should be handling and thinking about your social media as a professional even if you keep everything private nothing's really private so if you're gonna have social media which what is it like 9.5 times out of 10 people will then make sure you are representing yourself in a way that you feel comfortable with because I think honestly like too many people treat social media like it's their private diary and it's not it's a public thing and I say this as someone who's made that mistake I have 100% thought of social media as just like my private place to share my thoughts and it's not that it's definitely something that other people can see and other people will react to. So plan for it accordingly. Um, and that was like my main takeaway from that book. It didn't provide anything that I hadn't heard before. It maybe just went into a lot more detail than other sources, which is why I still rated it three stars. Like I do think it's a very solid book. It's just not something that I needed. Um, so now I'm just thinking about you know once I finish the silent patient I have this other book that's been on my nightstand for like a couple years let me see if I can grab it so the skillful teacher which is this book that has all kinds of different teaching advice in it I uh yeah I am like halfway through it I started this a couple years ago and then you know it was right I started it when my daughter was about eight months old and then once she started walking it was like game over but this is a thick thick book and it's got a lot of details in it but with the school year starting I think it's always helpful to read books like this that give like just concrete teaching advice so I will probably read that until the reading rush starts and I'm excited because this will be my first year participating in the reading rush I think it'll be fun but yeah that's pretty much been my day so far so you know hopefully y'all are having good days and I will talk to y'all later I want to point out he was my professor David Kirby he was my very first workshop professor for poetry I loved his class he teaches at Florida State University He's been teaching for like 30 years. He's phenomenal. So if you ever get a chance to work with him, do it because he is like by far one of the most empowering professors I've ever had in my life.
So something I want to highlight that this book does is this last section where the anthology is. Instead of just posting a bunch of poems together, what it does is tell you the mode of the group of poems it's going to give. It then gives a quick definition of it and sort of explains the context of that poem. And then it gives an example of what they're talking about. Something else it does is sometimes it includes these mini interviews and these gray boxes for certain poems. And then that way, as a reader, you can deepen your understanding of what the poem means and how it relates to the form that it's discussing. I personally have never really seen a craft book for poetry do this. So I find this to be incredibly fascinating and super helpful particularly for people who might be newer to writing different kinds of poems. Hey guys, so it is currently Friday, July 17th, and yeah, update. So today, my plan is to finish The Silent Patient, possibly finish the poetry craft book that I've been reading. I, I'm also watching my kids right now while my husband works, so that's fun. We, meaning me and my husband, are going to go on a date night tonight, which is going to be really nice. So this week, my husband and I were supposed to go on our honeymoon. We just got married in November. We've been together for like seven years at this point, but we finally decided to make things legal for tax purposes. <laughs> Not really, but kind of. <laughs> um, also, shout out to Mina Reads. I was just watching your video. And we basically aren't able to go on our honeymoon because it got canceled due to COVID. So luckily through our travel agency, we got a credit for our trip so we can just book it at a later time. It's not as if we lost that money. It's just sitting somewhere else for now, but it does suck because I specifically planned my trip for the summer. So I didn't have to miss a huge chunk of school. Yeah, that worked out really great. Uh, <laughs> never playing that game again. Um, so anyway, we were going to go to Paris for four days and then we we're going to go to Marrakesh for four days. And I can't think of any other cities that are as romantic as those two. So it really sucks that we're not going to be able to do that now. Our plan for tonight is to just go find a bench somewhere. A friend offered to watch our kids for the night and we're going to eat some Moroccan food and, you know, drink some French wine and French desserts and look at probably a large body of water if we can <laughs> and and make the most of it it's i don't want to come across as like i should be able to travel because i don't feel that way i definitely don't want to go anywhere outside of the state of florida and i definitely don't want to stay in any hotels right now or anything like that but it just sucks because my husband and i have only been on one trip alone without our kids our entire relationship and that was last year in february we took a weekend trip to costa rica because of a deal we saw in groupon we have never done like a full week-long trip just me and him i got pregnant very early on in our relationship so it has just been years of like only having kids we never really had a point where it was just me and him except for the first six months of our relationship so it would be nice if we could just have some time, just me and him, and, and we don't really get that. So that's the, the only thing I'm feeling is like just wishing we had more time for me and him. But regardless, we're going to go on our date night tonight. I'm also going to go visit my dad down in Miami now that he's like been recovered for a few weeks of COVID. My sister's birthday was yesterday, so we're going to do like a mini family reunion which will be nice but um yeah it's weird times it's such weird times for a lot of different reasons and it's only getting weirder and it's interesting I was talking to my sister last night and she is a nurse so she she's well versed in everything that's going on with COVID and the big thing that she told me was like people need to remember this is not a, a sprint it's a marathon and we're expecting a fast solution, but it's not as if the vaccine's gonna come out and we're all gonna be saved because vaccines have to be released in levels and 
certain people get the vaccine before others. There has to be trials for it. There has to be bidding wars based off of companies that are going to purchase the vaccine and and all of that. So it's going to be a year or two of this. We've really just started in a lot of ways, or maybe we're like halfway through. We're nowhere near done, though. And I think that's the thing people got to keep in mind with all of this. So, I mean, that doesn't really bode well, but <laughs> I'm someone who I like to know the facts. And I think that's been the issue with all of this is that people want to de deny the reality of the situation and they just want things to go back to normal. But in some ways, there will never be another normal for us. And that's okay. We just got to accept it and prepare for it. And I think that's the problem. Right now, people are still in their denial stage and they don't want to accept the reality that they're in. So that's all I've been thinking about. But anyway, all right, I'm going to get some reading done, some writing done. I didn't write anything yesterday. I had such a bad headache by the time I was ready to sit down and write and I ended up just falling asleep. So hopefully today my head feels a little bit better and I can, I can actually focus on some writing. But that's where I'm at. so it is currently Sunday morning and I am hanging out at my dad's house um, my sister's birthday was earlier this week so we decided to come down and visit him and yeah it's been a very eventful week in terms of reading I finished a lot of books this week yesterday I finished the graphic novel version of Fahrenheit 451 which was cool right now I'm starting to read B season by Milo Goldberg I don't really like it that much so I'm gonna give it about an hour today and after reading it for an hour if I don't like it I'm just gonna DNF it because it's one of those books that's been on my TBR shelf forever um, and then tomorrow I start with the reading rush so I will be vlogging my experience for the reading rush all next week now I did not get any writing done the past three days I'm hoping I can get some done today I think for me personally, I think it's better when I can take a break from a manuscript and just let things simmer in my brain so I can figure out how to fix some problems I'm noticing. At least that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes next week. But that is pretty much it for me today. If you stayed for the entire video, please go ahead and drop down a mango emoji below. My dad has a mango tree and so I am definitely going to be taking some of those back with me. I post videos every Wednesday, Sunday, and sometimes Friday. You can find me on all social media platforms at Shelly Flowers. And if you'd like to buy my book, the link is down below. All right. Ciao, y'all.